everybody, we've got a great episode of Rockin' Talkin' Talkin' coming right at you, so stay tuned and grab your joints, your beers, your coffee, your wine, whatever it is you need to chill. Sit back and enjoy a great interview with my amazing co-host, Steve Kudlow, Lips of Anvil, and I, as we interview some epic people. Thanks so much for supporting and sharing, and spread it around, everybody. Kelly B. Hello everybody, welcome to a very special episode of Rockin' Token Talkin' and you'll see why. Hello. Wait for everybody to join me. Sam is here too. Lips is here too. Oh, we're just waiting for everybody to connect, Thomas. Wow. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hey. Hold oh. on. I got you. <laughs> Everybody's connecting. Hello. Nice to see you, Sam. Thomas is connecting. Lips, I think, is... Oh, I have to let him in the room. <laughs> there we go. He'll connect in a minute. How is everybody? Just fine, thank Doing you. Doing good. How are you? Wonderful. I'm actually, I have my camera over here and the computer over here, so it's tripping me up. But anyway, um, why don't you guys all just introduce yourselves and what band you're in while we're waiting for Lips to connect. I'm Christopher Johnson. I play in Therion. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I, I am a big Therion fan, if you haven't noticed my posts across your page. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Where where are you from, Sam? Uh, Sam Spade from the Midnight Devils from uh, right in Lincoln, Nebraska. Nice, Nebraska. Yeah. Wow, way out in the way out there. Hi, Thomas. How are you? Can we hear you? We can't hear you. We can see Hi, you. Hi, baby. I'm fine. How are you? I'm wonderful. Can you? Can you hear me? I can hear you. We all know who you are, but can you introduce yourself Good. and what band you're from? Well, I'm Thomas Wikström from the band Therion, and there is my bandmate in the in the fun house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I, I didn't see him for a good for a while. Boy, boy, yeah. I have, oh, uh, this is going to be awesome. Uh, thank you so much for joining, everybody. We're just waiting for Lips to connect. Uh, and we have one more person. We're also waiting for oh. another friend. There's Liv. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Everybody. All good. All right. And then one more, one more person, and we're we're good. Okay, we're gonna do it all over again for Liv. So um, let's say who you are and what band you're from, please. I'm Christopher Johnson from Therion. Nice. Sam Spade from the Midnight Devils. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thomas. I, uh, yeah, it is me again. Another guy. Yeah, I know. There's lots of us. <laughs> this is, who are you, Thomas? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm Thomas and I'm the singer in the band Therion together with that guy over there that guy over there Up chris in the right yes. corner hi steve why don't you tell um lips who you are and what band you're from please brother hi kelly yeah uh i play guitar for the uh well play guitar for a group called sex and witchcraft we uh our heyday i guess you'd say we're talking about 1990 through 1992 but i think we're here because uh we've been doing some remote collaborating and putting stuff together 30 years later. That's true. Ooh. And I'm working on a video for you guys and it's been an honor. So awesome. thank you, Kelly. <laughs> You're so welcome. So Lips, that's the light up for today. How are you doing today, Lips? I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we I, I'm wondering, do you still want to follow with our, our uh, theme for today or oh, not? Oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> Why don't you tell us everybody what happened yesterday? Well, 
I had done an interview with a guy, and the guy asked me about Ted Nugent. And he was, and the Constitution of the United States. And I said, well, the guy's right. You're not going to take away that, that amendment. It's not going to happen. We're, we're talking about gun rights in the U.S. Yeah. It kind of, you know, and I, and that his statistics about, about gun-free zones and <clears throat> versus places where you're allowed to have guns and the amount of crime and the difference. And mm -hmm. there are statistics. There are statistics that he memorizes and they're correct. <laughs> so yes. at least what I said I is that statistically speaking, he is correct. And what happened? And if I came from where he lived, I would carry on the same way. And you're never going to remove guns from the society of that of of that was built on the fact that mm. of guns. Right. That's how the West was won. Yep. Yep. So hi hi Ben. Um, and, another and person. Then, I'm hey, not not for saying that, man. Holy fuck. So I guess my point <laughs> was is that you make an honest statement and then a really crappy, you know media person somewhere takes a fraction of what you uh, listen, said and blows it up or misreads it like does I didn't it say yeah I didn't say that there should be should be stricter gun laws and mm. there certainly should be and more on the level of perpetrators you get caught with an illegal gun no matter whether anybody got hurt or where you got found out that your handprints are on it you get 10 years. Yeah. That's it. If it's an yeah. unregistered fucking piece of machinery, you got a you fucking not supposed to touch that. Even getting your fingerprints on it is worth 10 years. Guess what? People will be a lot less apt to owning an illegal gun. Yeah. And then, then you can talk about stricter gun laws for the people, the law abiding <laughs> citizens that end up with guns, anybody gets them legally, there's no easy way to do that. Yeah. yeah. It already is strict. Yeah. No one it, can just go buy a gun. You gotta go get lessons. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go to fucking safety classes. There's all kinds of things you have to do before you're allowed to have a gun. And I'm aware of all these things. And that's fine. There is gun laws. We're and in Canada, and I think you're allowed to, buy, to purchase, and that's true too. So it's not about the gun law as much as as much as it's about the the, the punishment for those who are breaking the law. And it's got to be not even about even being in the commission of a crime. It's even being in possession of something like a firearm without a permit. Period. What what are the gun laws like where you guys all live? Are they all the same? Like, I know Thomas, you're in Sweden. Are you allowed to carry no, weapons in, there? Not at all. And I, I'm in Spain now. And it's, oh, it's you're in Spain here. now. But but it's another thing because we don't have a history of that. You know, in the United States, I get it. It's a history of of having a gun. If you let it free here, it would be another thing. It wouldn't work. But as he say, a lot of European people think that it's like in the movies, you go into a store and buy a gun, and including me. And I guess it's not. No, 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 no. You Right? It, it, yeah, you have to have, it's got to be properly registered. Everything. There is strict, strict gun laws in all the, of the United States. That's the thing that people don't, yeah. are misunderstanding. That's, and that is not the problem. You, you, no. you, it's it takes weeks to get a fucking gun license and, and even take that gun out of the store. Yeah, I think Christopher has, has a lot. No, every, every, every when you buy a gun out of a store, every everything is is registered, and it is against the law for you to give that gun or that gun can I anyone else without a permit to do so. 
Here's here's permit office. Here's something though I just want to say lips I and I agree with you and I've I've lived in the states where it's really dangerous as a as a single woman and everybody has a gun and you kind of feel like well now I want one but here's the thing what happened to dime bag maybe never would have happened if it was in camp I mean you can say that about every every, every shooting every aspect yeah. of this it, and it's and once again it's it's rarely, if ever, is is the person involved in the actual murder carrying is carrying it legally, carrying a gun right. legally. It's an illegal gun. They're already a fucking criminal before they even shot anybody. He had a terror that's, attack. That's my point. We had a terror attack in, in Sweden yesterday. Oh my god! Uh, with a guy running around with a with a knife, which you can't do either. And uh, it depends who who's got the knife. I can go with a knife in yes. my pocket to the store. It's I will not hurt anybody, but in the wrong hands, you know. Lip, and they I, I, they don't they don't care about the law. They don't care. You got to make the That's law to the dumbest people. person in the room. Unfortunately, always. I don't, <laughs> it's it's not the answer to punish. Those who are law abiding for the things that, that for the, see it for, both ways. For, for I those agree with that. Aren't, that aren't doing anything wrong. Uh, you know, it's just not right. It, it's that the balance is not correct because by putting stricter laws on the, the people that, like now, in order to get a permit to go get hunting, they charge you 10 times the more amount of money. Now, do you guys feel you worried know, about some people, some people in, in rural art? places in the country that's how they get their food there is no supermarket so they go hunting and it's certainly like that in in europe and in, in certainly in switzerland i know that for a fact that people have guns of, of, you, you christopher has a license it, right because they hunt christopher do you have your license i have a hunter's license in sweden and uh, i have a license for shotgun and uh, uh, we call it a moose gun. So it's a rifle, moose rifle. So it's a pretty heavy duty. Uh, That's I have moved, fantastic I've for a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I want to be able to get food if worse comes to worse. So I'm not one of these crazy survivalists who would build a bunker in my yard, but uh, I like to know how things work and uh, I like to have a theoretical knowledge of a lot of stuff. And uh, I had a friend who worked as a hunting instructor, and he always joked with me because I've been a vegetarian for 22 years or something. Um, <laughs> uh, that, hey, don't you want to join the course and take a hunter's license? And one of these days, I just said, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So oh, it was wow, fun. Uh, going against the grain and doing something that I wasn't expected to do. But now I moved to Malta, and it wasn't so easy to bring my firearms with me because here there's nothing to hunt. So you need to have a target license. And to be able to get that, I, I need to go to a shrink to get the paper saying I'm mentally <laughs> That's how it should be. Fucked. Well equipped yes. to, to have a, a, a carry a firearm. And they have really strict laws. Like when, when you go to the shooting range, you, you can't even just bring the gun with you. It needs to be locked. And the ammunition needs to be locked in a separate container. And right. if there's a roadblock for whatever reason, you need to declare that you have a gun with you. And you can't even put the ammunition in the same safe as where you have the firearms. It's really strict. I think if so, all those rules applied and the evaluation of your mental status, which I think is important to some of the crimes that happened with the guns, right? Is that nobody's checking that. I mean, I think it would also be funny if people who look like us walked in there and were labeled totally sane enough to have a weapon. <laughs> Right. Like also, no, seriously, I think I think that's important. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, all stricter gun laws will do is just make everything more expensive for the people who, who actually have been paying to own guns all along. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, but yeah, it, it is expensive. Stop, it won't stop people from breaking into gun stores and stealing all the guns and then selling them on the black market like like is an everyday occurrence 
That's very true. I, I think that true. I think there's some things that we agree on here, but what we haven't talked about would be, you know, when in the Constitution, when they were talking about the right to bear arms, they were talking about muskets, right? So my question is, is that yeah, you know, I agree with you, Lips, that if somebody has an illegal gun, ten years in prison, I, I can understand that. But the question I have is what kinds of weapons are going to be legal for private citizens to have? So if we took semi-automatic weapons off the table, I think we'd actually be <laughs> yeah. brought for an agreement. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was I in Texas I, I recently. Would completely, I would completely agree with that. Certainly, I, and that's what, I don't have a problem with that. There are things that, that I can see the public having purpose for, but even to have semi-automatic rifles the whole premise and thought i'm gonna i need a gun and the and i understand what the reasons behind what that amendment was about was about a, a, basically a huge insurrection but in today's world you're not going to stand up against your country's army no no as a matter of fact what you're saying is absolutely right because if you were to uh, extrapolate what they said in the Constitution, at that time, the government had muskets and private citizens could have muskets. The equivalent right. would be now, if I could own a, a hydrogen bomb, right? And we right. definitely don't want that. It's because uh, the, the weapons, the technology, uh -huh. the I just want to say, I think the, that taking what they say in the Constitution just literally across the board. No, no, no I don't think you can do that. But, but I that, think that's a... I think that there's a level that it can be completely that there's modern compromise for it to actually fit the model. Bingo! I agree with you 100. percent And I think the first thing you have to go after are semi-automatic weapons because yes, if, if you're with a bump stock, suddenly you have an automatic weapon. Suddenly you could kill a hundred people. Okay. In a minute. I was I was at a Sunday brunch dinner, uh, and there was a table. There is a table laid out of food and a table laid out of weapons, you know, and, and they were all legal. That's the thing. Gun after gun after semi after weapon and a bucket of bullets. And they were practicing safe, legal shooting target practice. But, you know, the babies are sitting there with earmuffs on to protect their ears on their mama's lap eating potato salad. It was the most bizarre experience right and i'm thinking how is that legal i get self-protection in your home but that just seemed mad to me mad but, but you know, i mean there's always a everything is in is in how to what i don't think you could ever take the right away what's the extent of what what and 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 what are the circumstances and what is the what is the re, what is the reason but I think it, there's a there's a rational and 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 logical place where it could be. That that's what I really believe, and I think a lot of it has to do more more with, with the 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 incarceration of people responsible for bad deeds. Certainly that, but 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 more so the possession of illegal arms. Right. It's got to be really really stiff. So we agree 100%. And the, the place where I get a little bit on the progressive side is I would like to increase the number of types of weapons that are illegal. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We can meet and, in the middle. We can meet call gun control and call that gun control. Certainly, but people don't need submachine guns. And they certainly Absolutely. don't need grenades. They certainly uh -huh. don't need fire, fire uh, you know, blow torches, right? They certainly don't need Weapons of okay, war. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with that, but the, on the other hand, people who want to have military grade, like rifles, <laughs> or pack, assault rifles, whatever, if, if they want to have that and they can get it, they actually get registered so you know who has them, how many, and where they are. If they are illegal, you don't know that. So it's not such an easy question because if somebody's a complete crackpot and like, yeah, I'm going to yeah, build more militia, that's, that's they will buy all these weapons and you would know who they are, how much they have, and, you know, you have their address, you know, and their ID number. 
Otherwise, they would just build up their shit somewhere in, I don't know, desert of Nevada, and you won't know until they use them. <laughs> Unfortunately, in the, at least in You're the United awesome, Yeah, I agree with you. I'm wondering why anybody would want to have military grade weapons. And I, I'll extend that to, I'll include the police. I don't think that the police should be having any type of semi-automatic weapon. Yeah. Or what they bring in for riot gear now, it's like designed to 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 punish these people and injure the people. I I I would like to see a de-escalation of all the. I'm not saying we do have a right to have weapons. I agree with that, but we need a de-escalation. The technology and the deadliness of the weapons that are available. Uh, Kelly, you were talking about this meeting where they had, you know, sandwiches here and guns <laughs> here. And so listen, the, the whole thing is if those guns can be used in a way that could kill people, but slowly, I killed one person. Give me a, give me a few seconds before. I, if you do that, that would get rid of the problem of mass shootings if people are not able to shoot round after round. Mm. So that, that's what I would go at. When I think about gun control, that's what I want to do. I want to slow down the deadly force. The, the crazy the thing other, is, if other, one of you guys broke into my house in Canada to, to hurt me, I have to maim you and get away. If I accidentally kill you, I could do 20 years in jail. Same here. That is insane to me because I've lived in some scary neighborhoods where it's like, how could that be the rule? You can't your home is your mouth. home. Even right. if they're, even if they're, they got a knife at your throat. Right, I have to grab because that knife and not, jab you in the you, leg you instead of the heart. Man, you got a lot of proving <laughs> that, you, that you that you did it in self defense. I, I'm not sure what the statistics are, but I, I'm pretty sure that the majority of crimes, uh, violent crimes committed in the United States are actually committed with weapons that at least aren't registered to the person right. committing that crime. Right. Um, so right. It, you look at Columbine and as, and as an example, the two kids went in there um, loaded to the max with ammunition and different weapons. Um, they didn't buy a single one of those guns. They had some, some woman who uh, had right. a permit or I don't even think she did. I, I think guess, she was just old enough in the United States. There's a lot of places where you can go gun shows and the dealers are happy to sell you guns without any paperwork. It's true. Any, you can get them. And I think that's the Canadian way of thinking of most people is that if there were no guns, right? Like I have one Texas guy go, wait, nobody has guns. <laughs> nobody. Wait, nobody, <laughs> right? He was no. very confused, right? But See, I don't is, think you'll ever disarm America or take well, that right is, away. There's, I think there's more, there's almost more guns than people. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but anyways, know. let's talk about music where you guys all are. So it, um, what is everybody doing right now during COVID? What are you guys creating? Well, we're writing a lot of music. We, we just made one record and we have enough material for way more than two more records. Oh, good. So yes. we're, we're using the time very wisely. We compose a lot and we record remotely a lot. So we're way ahead of schedule. We have, have almost recorded everything of the basics for, for Leviathan 2. And oh. uh, the drums and the bass have just been nailed for Leviathan 3. So oh my God. We're, we're not losing any time. Oh, no, still writing. We, we we didn't meet in person for what is it? One over one year, but we yeah. speak every day because we're sending files. I mean, the, the the amount of gigabyte must be some kind of record, you know. It's, uh, it's amazing. So amazing. this is your seventeenth album you guys let out. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Right. Good for you guys. That's great. That's really really great. And you're all almost ready for Leviathan too. Have you guys felt like COVID? Um, enhance your productivity. <laughs> Look at this yeah, interviewing yeah. guy yeah. here. <laughs> I'm <laughs> curious because I know, no, I know I both the same both question. Steve and I have felt like COVID you know, has had negative things, but definitely as far as working remotely um, has really done great things for music in a lot of aspects. Totally. Not uh, or like live concerts. But. Yeah, we, we recorded this album in uh, I don't know how many countries. Was it eight? Eight different nine, countries. Nine countries, I think. Awesome, man. Right on. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Sweden, yeah. Germany, yeah, Spain, I U.S. of A. 
England, but uh, Italy, it, I don't Israel. Know. Israel, nice. yeah. The choir really? really? music is recorded in Israel. Yeah, Argentina, Argentina, yeah. <laughs> Thomas, I just wanted to ask, are you doing any more solo stuff? I know you gave a special gift to me um, of Ave Maria. We could talk about that at some other point, but are you doing any more solo stuff? Well, uh, yeah, I've been saying yeah for 10 years now. It never <laughs> <laughs> I, I never find awesome. the time to do it. I want to do it, but I don't know when the time is right. I will do it. Right well, I now, can't I, wait. I wouldn't have a chance. You know. Oh well, it sounds like you guys are really yeah. busy. And what are what are you um, working on right now, Lips? What am I working on? Lyrics. Lyrics. More lyrics. Uh, it always takes the longest. <laughs> I always try and pry what he's doing every week. Like, what do you, what, 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 what's the song about? What was the last one? Uh, don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Wow. You have so much to look back on. How could you not? <laughs> Just going to look forward. It's not what life is about. Right on. That's what you always teach really me. About to leave the history behind you. And how many albums will this be? We're working on making that history appear. Very important about taking part in the future. That's how you make it. That's how you get anywhere. Is worrying about tomorrow, like recording music and writing music that you're not going to use for another year from now. Who gives a shit? I can get, get it done. <laughs> hey. The guy who writes and records the most music is the guy that wins. It's not the guy <laughs> who oh, most yeah, records. Oh, that, so, so. Right on, man. Right and how, what right album down. number is this, Lips? It's a race to the end. How many? Yeah, it's a race to the end. How <laughs> many do you have? It, this is number 19 I'm working on. <laughs> so, yeah, theory on, you yeah. got to catch up. You're real close. So you could hit 20 first. Yeah, respect. We, Steve, we what do you have in your disorder? I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me interrupt you. Ready, so set, go. Game started on this show. <laughs> what year was the first Anvil album? Uh, first Anvil album was that, that came out was in 81. 81. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Same, I wasn't even in the, the same In the same time as uh, Ace of Spades. Nice. Wow! Because what about you first, guys? Our first show, our first show as Anvil was opening for Motorhead on the, on the Ace of Spades on their Ace of Spades tour. Oh, nice! I was I'm, just watching footage of you playing in the town I was born in a few months after I was born, oh. Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. <laughs> oh wow! We flipped the truck there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What um what year did your first album come out, Chris? Um 89, we recorded the first um mini album, Time to Tell, that was released in, in 1990. But I don't know if that really counts as an album, as a mini album for songs. So in 91 came the first full length. No, it counts. It counts. It all counts. We don't really count it in the 17th, but you know, it was our first time having a vinyl press. So, like lips, you just must have never stopped. No. <laughs> How are you handling the the downtime and the isolation? Is it getting to you guys? We're all busy. I mean, most of the time I spend in my office or in my studio, anyway. So it's not that big difference. I think, but the, down, the downtime would be a problem if you took the approach of waiting for everything to return to the way it was before the pandemic. Then the downtime yeah. would be a problem. But it sounds like everybody here, I think you use the term, like, you know, the pivot or pioneer, find way, new ways to do things. If you do that, then it's, uh, you know, th there is no downtime. Absolutely. Yeah, I never have downtime, but yeah, uh, well, it's right hard. Period. It's hard not being well, able can... to go to shows and it, it's depressing. Yeah, it gets I, to I, people. I'm longing to be on the road, you know what? Yeah. I long to. Oh man, I miss the I miss the tour. 
<laughs> with this type of technology, like Kelly bringing us from all over the world together here, you know, we have we have an alternate route to get to the road. You know, here we are reaching, you know, whoever wants to come to this show right now. And uh, we don't have a minute of downtime for that. You know, of course, you know, there's playing live and gigging, um, which is great. But when we don't have that opportunity, make the best of what we did. I, you know, Steve, um, I don't know if you brought it up, but he does a lot of um, virtual tours. I don't know if you want to sort of explain that what, what that is, Steve. Well, it's just, it's just live streaming. And there's something that I've done that's kind of weird. <laughs> what that is, is that, so I'm on the East Coast of the United States. And 8 p.m. seems like a, a popular time for live streams, right? Um, what I've done for these uh, virtual tours is one night I play at 8 p.m., the next night at 9 p.m., the next night at <laughs> yeah, and then go around a 24-hour cycle. And what's great about that is, you know, I have friends around the world that you say, for example, in Australia, if I play at 6 a.m. here, then I wind up playing for people in Australia at 8 p.m. So exactly, I've got it's always the future somewhere, man. And I, I experience that too. Lips, I love you, but you give me one hour a week. And everybody around the world is like, can't we do it at this time? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, we can't. It's this time and that's it. And, you know, some people it's tomorrow, some people it's yesterday. And I think that's really cool. But it is the face, unfortunately, of the music industry. And what we have to do is online content. Ask me how it's all going to work. I don't know. I think the whole industry is going to be down for another year as we knew it before. So... I think there's going to be lots of new awesome things coming at us and we guys stay relevant and it's difficult. So I'd love to hear about what you're doing, you know, personally outside of this as well, because it's hard. It's hard to stay current right now. Yeah, I'll tell you, um, you know, again, not to not to sit there and like, you know, keep hopping on the same thing. But I really think it's only downtime if you let it be downtime. I've probably been more uh, I've got more done during this pandemic in music than I've got done in probably the last 20 years. There's more variables around that. But um, it's never, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And, and we have definitely come a lot further, a lot quicker in communications than uh, we ever would have without the pandemic. Now, um, do you, so do you, do you, do you all think that in one more year we will return to 200,000 person concerts? Do you think we'll return to the industry as we knew it? No. I don't think lips? So. I don't know. Not, not for a long time. People have to get used to that the pandemic is over and stop worrying about it. And, and when do you time for that to fade. Absolutely, man. I agree with you 100, percent man. Again, what do you guys think, Thomas, Chris? Like, in uh, that uh, part of the I, world, did they see a future soon? I, I, they opened up the restaurants here yesterday, you know, and it was amazing just to go out and see people and take a beer, you know, yeah. with your friends. And yeah, that was cool. But I, I like to think positive about it. I think this vaccine, I believe in it. So I, I think that will stop it, you know. But if it's one year or one and a half year or two years, I don't know. But I, I like to think that it's, it's going to be okay. Me too. Me well, too. I, I, think, I think things are going to wind up in a better place than they are now. And ultimately, a better place than they were before the pandemic. The thing I think that we need to consider, though, is there are certain things like an interview. Where in the past, a lot of times people would say, well, when, when are you going to be in the Boston area? And let's meet. Yeah. Everything would, there was yeah, so, yeah, many yeah, sure. things, so many things were based on fossil fuels in the past. Now, because of the pandemic, yeah. we found ways to work remotely. And what I think is there's going to be uh, a deep, great. Yeah, and there'll be a deep integration coming. Yes. It's not going to go back to the way it was. And in that way, when you mentioned concerts with 200,000 people, I think it's less likely. Because now there's way more ways to experience even live music. So, of course, there will be crowds in this old school way of doing things. But I would like to make an analogy about that. Is 
before recorded music, you know, you know albums, uh, the sheet music industry was the music industry. Mm-hmm. And at the, the, the advent yeah. of, you know, sound recording, the people in the sheet music industry are like, oh, when is it going to get back to the way it was? Well, it never did. That doesn't mean people don't buy sheet music. They do. It's just that there's there's more ways of doing things now. And I think that I think that's what's going to happen here. There's going to be live concerts, old school things. But what's happened now, this type of a meeting, this live streaming, the remote collaboration that we're all doing, I, I, that's going to stick around and there'll be a, an integration. Can I just... Can I just ask one question? Does anybody else think this guy looks like the metal version of uh, Jay from Silent Bob? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you guys see it? Like just a little bit? A little bit? Yeah, yeah, All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I agree with you, man. I, I really do. I've, I've been saying it from since last spring. I'm so thankful all of you guys are kicking around to do these interviews. You have not said so much as two words, Sam. So please, like, chime in whenever you want to, man. Don't oh, you shy. guys are doing great. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think um, it's going to come back to where you are? Uh, it's it's already started to open up here in uh, in Nebraska. At least they never really stopped doing concerts in certain places. And I work, I, it, you can kind of think of this, like I work as a DJ in a strip club and it never really shut down. We're still packing in 100 people into the strip club every night of the week. Wow. But yet, concerts aren't allowed to happen. That's the So you guys thing. are personally responsible for the spread of COVID. <laughs> 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 absolutely i guess <laughs> what a great job do you actually do do you get to play your own music or do you have yeah. to dj yeah it's i mean it's a cool thing where we i get to play uh, create a cool dynamic of playing terrible strip club music but sliding in great rock and roll music on top of that it's a cool thing that i, I don't think anybody's ever uh, done here in nebraska at least it definitely creates a buzz and keeps it keeps the club jumping. Nice. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. So um, that's crazy. I noticed that about the states. You know, certain states are wide open. Certain states are shut right down. I don't know why that is, you know, but it, it's kind of it's really painful to people on the next state over who can't do a freaking thing. And, and they're talking about just booking tours in, say, Texas or just in Florida or everybody's mm-hmm. kind of planning on these things are opening up. Uh, bands are going to go there and do shows. I, I mean, I don't know what what the right thing is. The thing is, is that if you're going to bring in cross, even yeah, members. The problem is there's across the states where they have different, they might have different restrictions. Right. right. Yeah. So if you're bringing yeah. in, say, a member or the whole band all to another state, you're going to be quarantined there for a couple of weeks. And is it worth the pay to be put up, you know, cost, right? Cost. It's always the dollars. I got a question for, you know, we got a whole like plethora of musicians from different areas. Um, I've been I've experienced the side of things where I bought concert tickets and then they were canceled and there was absolutely no nothing except maybe an email saying someday we'll help you out or return your ticket or give you another ticket i don't know if any of you guys have been on the side of selling tickets (laughs) and having to cancel and dealing with that or on my side of the things where i i had actually bought concert tickets and um wasn't able to use them and who was keeping all of this money that was sold for concert tickets and never happened. <laughs> a lot of, as far as I know, unless unless, unless you guys know differently, um, these nobody's money was refunded for all these concerts that never took place. Ouch! In Europe, they are. Oh, they yeah, are. South American. America, no. <laughs> wow. wow. Cancelled over there. A lot of people get, you know, they they, they can't get the money back because. Sometimes they, they, they can't just get for the money, right? Now there's a, there's a few there's a few uh, concerts that the tickets are still supposed to be open for for whenever the band can come back. Right, but in in band yeah. time, you know that doesn't mean that the band's gonna even be around. When, when exactly, open. exactly. Who knows, right? Oh, I, 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 I might not exist by the time that they can come back. 
I, I, well, I heard Live Nation may be going bankrupt, so it depends maybe who your ticket's sold by. Yeah, if there's a I company the, going with ticket to kiss to kiss in Stockholm, they never came, of course, and they will not come this yeah. year either. But the, the, the ticket is still valid, you know. Oh, nice. Well, we got one minute come. left. I just want to say thank you so much to everybody. It's been a real blast. Nice seeing everybody, man. Thank awesome. you. Pleasure. Talking with you all. Cool to meet yeah, all stay you. safe. Thank Keep you. a medal, everybody. Love you. Yeah. Bye. Nice meeting you guys. Nice to meet you. Thanks, Kelly. Bye.